In the previous video, we created an empty and added the game manager scripts to it. And then we were able to spawn obstacles from a predefined position. If we noticed, whenever this obstacle collides with the character, it causes it to rotate or tilt slightly. We do not want the character rotating or tilting along any axis other than the Y position. So we are going to constrain or freeze its rotation and position. Select the character and on the rigid body, expand constraint and freeze the rotation on its X, Y and Z axis. And also freeze only the X and Z axis of its position. Now that we've resolved this issue, let's create an illusion that our character is actually running at a fast pace. Instead, it is only the background that is actually moving. So the first thing we're going to do is to add the move left script to the background. Simply select the background and add the script to it. Press play to see the outcome. It appears as if our player was actually running, but unfortunately, the width of the background wasn't as long as the length of the game. So rather than duplicating the background a thousand times, instead, we will create a repeat background script to ensure the background repeat seamlessly throughout the duration of our game. Select the background and add the script to it and then double click to open it. Using Vector Tree, let's declare our starting position and in the start function, we will assign the transform position to the starting position. Note, the start position we declared is not the same with the transform.position of the game object. Using debug.log, you will notice that the start position by default is 0 along all the three axes, while the transform.position of the game object is 45, 9.5, and 4. Hence the reason why we need to assign the transform.position to the start position. And by doing that, we now have start position to be 45, 9.5, and 4, which is equal to the transform.position. To confirm, let's add another debug.log after the line of code. And immediately, you will have a good grasp of what I'm trying to insinuate. Now, in update method, we will use if statement to reset the background whenever its starting position is less than the transform.position. So, inside the if condition, we will write transform.position.x is less than startposition.x because our emphasis is only on the x axis. Hence, we're going to use in just the x axis. And within the block, we will say transform.position is equal to the start position. This will reset back 
to enable the background repeat. Try it out in Unity to see the result. There is no significant difference because so far their positions are the same. In order for us to set a significant change, let's add an offset of minus 40 to the start position. The outcome is great, but the background loops in a weird fashion. And to achieve a smooth and a seamless loop, we need to find a way to divide the background into equal halves. So let's add Box Collider to the background. And with that, we should be able to make the looping seamless. We don't need to edit the collider because it fits the exact shape of the background. So in our script, let's declare a repeat width float variable. And inside our start function, let's assign the exact half size of the box collider to our repeat width variable. And what this line means is get the size on the x axis of the box collider component that this script is attached to, and then divide it by 2. Now replace the 40 with the repeat width and save your project. Now our background is looping seamlessly and if you notice any gap, simply reposition the background in the same view. So that is it on this video and if you have any question, do well to ask in the comment section and I will gladly answer all your questions. So I will see you guys in the next video.